going to tie up a great little small mouth pattern today. This is a, what I call the mixed media. It's a very interesting little crayfish slash sculpin, maybe more crayfish, I guess, uh, critter pattern for warm water conditions. It's a great small mouth fly. It's, it's a good carp fly. But I think if you were to tie this in different colors, more of a shrimp pattern, this would be a, a good bonefish fly too. This is the mixed media. Now, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm also going to mention another bonefish fly. I've done a number of bonefish videos recently, and I didn't want to do some more, but I, I threw this one in just because it could. it's a great smallmouth fly, but it could also be used for bonefish. But I'll also tell you about another fly that's great for bonefish at the end of the video that you probably wouldn't think of. That's the mixed media, and I'll get started tying. start the mixed media fly with my hook and the vise. This is a Mustad 3366 in a size 4. You could go with something a little bit heavier if you want to. I like a straight eye. Some people will tie these on like a 9671 or 72 TMC 5263, something like that. But I like the straight eye hook and a little bit shorter shank. I'm going to, after debarbing the hook, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using a UTC 140 denier in a burnt orange. I'm going to attach my thread maybe an eye length behind the eye of the hook. And a little bit more than that, I'm just going to put a little bump of thread in here for our dumbbell eyes. I want these eyes to be a good ways back from the eye of the hook. You could scooch that back a little bit if you want because we need to leave some room for tying in the wing on this. Now the dumbbell eyes are just a brass eye, dumbbell eye. This is a, a meat size medium. I'm going to attach that right in front of that little bump. Some crisscross wraps. And again, if that's too far forward, you can push that, scooch that back a little. Some crisscross wraps in there, and then I'm going to wrap under the dumbbell eyes and over the shank of the hook just to cinch that together. Leave my thread hanging right behind the dumbbell eyes. I'm going to put a drop of head cement in here, let that soak down in, secure that a little bit. Now, the mixed media fly is basically just three. Other than the eyes and the hook, three different components, some rubber legs, some flash, and some red fox fur. The rubber legs go in next. There's different ways that you could do this. I've got some uh, orange and brown black flaked called pumpkin silly legs. I'm going to get about five, maybe six of these and pull these off. I'm going to leave the ends connected still. I'm not going to trim those just yet. It just helps in working with the material. I'm going to take these about halfway down. And I'm going to attach these to the hook shank and I want to be tight right up behind the dumbbell eyes there. Some people will attach these in the front and then fold them back. You can do that if you want, however you want to. A couple of wraps rearward. Now I'm going to fold these over. Be careful not to pull and stretch this too hard because you want those to really kind of be right back up against, like that, against those dumbbell eyes. I'm going to wrap rearward, keeping this on top of the hook shank to just about the point of the hook. You don't have to wrap all the way down to the end of the shank. I just want to collect these a little bit, have them all down onto the hook shank. 
And I like them when they kind of flare out a little bit to resemble a crawdad or some other critter in the water. This adds a lot of life to it. Now I'm going to take these. These are a little bit long. I want the overall length of this to be about the same as the hook shank. I want to leave some of the orange in here. This is why I left those ends unclipped altogether because it's easier for me to hold this. And I'm going to clip these, but I'm going to clip them at different lengths. So they're not all going to be the same length. They will all flop around a little bit different that way. Bring my thread up front. I'm going to have it right up next to the dumbbell eyes. Actually, I'm going to have it a little bit out in front of the dumbbell eyes. Now I'm going to put the flash on. For flash, I'm using some flash accent by Wopsy. You can use crystal flash if you want. This is a copper color. And these colors are chosen more or less because of the fox fur on this. If you want to have an overall different color on this fly, you can certainly choose some different colors, different thread, whatever. About halfway down that flash, I'm going to bring it up underneath the hook shank. I'm going to wrap a few wraps rearward and then fold this back while I continue to wrap back up behind the dumbbell eyes. And I'm going to trim this flash just a little bit longer than the rubber legs or the silly legs. Now, the wing on this is a red fox fur. You can use red fox tail. It's a little bit denser, a little thicker. This is just a body fur. I find that it works just as well. And I don't like the wings on these to be too, I guess, full or too dense. Once you get your fox fur clipped from the skin, the one thing you want to do is you don't want to take out all this under fur. This is going to add some bulk to the fly. So you want to make certain you leave that. You can comb that out if you want to get any loose hairs out, but I like to just go ahead and leave all of that. Actually, the, the original instructions that I read over 15 years ago, and I don't know if it's by the original author of the pattern or not, but it mentions specifically to leave the under fur in. You want these when they're tied in to be about the same length as the rubber legs, maybe a little shorter. I like the rubber legs to be a little bit longer than the, the overall body. So once we measure that, we're going to trim the ends of that nice and even. I like to, on this particular fur, it has some gray in the at the base of it. It's not all cream and red. And I like to leave that in because I just think it gives fly a little more contrast down up here towards the head of the fly. Once you have that in, you're going to want to really crank down right up behind those eyes to secure that fur in. Your thread can very easily slip all the way off that fur. You're going to get a number of wraps in here to secure that, and you will. Kind of build that nose up just a little bit, and that's fine. Keep wrapping in, smooth all of that off. Certainly, you have no gaps in there. Put in a whip finish. And if you want to, you can put some hard as hull on this or some UV material or something like that to help to protect the thread wraps on this. I generally don't. These are very quick flies to tie. If it starts getting banged up, I'm going to. I'm just going to cut everything off and tie another one. I, I'll save the hook and the 
dumbbell eyes if I can and just tie another one. So I just put a little head cement on all the exposed thread wraps there. A little bit more right back here. And the mixed media fly is done. So this was originally tied as kind of a crayfish imitation for smallmouth. I think it has become known as a decent carp fly. But if you were to tie this, say, even with the, the red fox fur in this, put in some uh, light pink, a shell pink, or even a uh, pearl flash of blue and legs, gold or silver eyes, I think you catch bonefish on this. Matter of fact, I know you could catch bonefish with this. So that is the mixed media. I had mentioned earlier in the video, in the introduction, that there was another fly that I recommend as a good bonefish fly. I'm not gonna do a video on it, because I already have. And that is the Clouser darter. You wouldn't think it because it is a darter and it is tied for smallmouth, but years ago, when I was down in Mexico fishing for bonefish, I tied some Clouser darters in kind of a tan, tan and brown, I think it was, or else two shades of tan and a little crystal flash and all that and made it more of a shrimp pattern and it worked great for bonefish. So there's an added bonus bonefish fly if you're looking for some flies to tie for some salty water. But that is the mixed media. Thanks for watching today. Thank you for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned a new pattern, at least a tip or trick here and there. If you'd like to help Dress Irons, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things for the video. You can also head out to dressedirons.com where you can buy flies, tools, stickers, and merch. Or you can join a growing community over on Locals at the Dressed Irons Fly Tying Guild. You can also donate to Dressed Irons if you want through the link at the bottom of the description. I thank everybody for their ongoing support as it really does help the creation of these videos. And what's important is to remember, only fly time. You're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Well.